How's everyone doing tonight? Yes, thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, so uh, my name is Luke and I'm here to speak to y'all about the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative. Who has not heard of the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative? Okay, great. So this is gonna be fun. So the title of my presentation is Why the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Neighborhood Integrity Initiative Sucks and in parens isn't, and isn't about our neighborhoods or their integrity. Um, so let's get into it. So just a quick little bit about me. My name's Luke. Uh, I work for LA Metro in my day job. I crunch numbers on our rail side, so I try and save us money on our, our services there. Um, then I also am the president of the Los Feliz Neighborhood Council. So uh, if any of you are up in Los Feliz or Silver Lake area, uh, ooh, whoops, sorry, I'm just mucking around here. Um, stop by, say hi to the neighborhood council. I could sure use some uh, fellow urbanists to, uh, to pop into our meetings sometimes. As you can understand, neighborhood councils tend to be one of those places where good ideas tend to, to, tend to die. Not always, not always. Some, some of us are doing good work on the neighborhood councils. Um, this year I actually started two different organizing tools through social media. The first one, Happy Urbanists, which is a once monthly, although this, this month of September we had several of them, but a once monthly gathering of urbanists in Los Angeles, just because. Because we aren't gathering otherwise. We aren't just networking otherwise, because the only time that I would see other fellow urbanists was at an event like this or at City Hall giving testimony about something where we were all riled up. And I thought we should just get together and hang out and network and mingle because that's a good thing to do. And I think I've, you know, we've, I've started to see some really cool stuff coming out of that. And uh, uh, you know, we now are regularly getting 20, 30, 40 people at some of these gatherings. Our next one coming up, actually next Monday the 3rd up in North Hollywood. And then Greater LA is a Facebook page that I created originally to oppose the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative. And we'll get into a little bit why later, why Greater LA. But um, now it's sort of also sort of generally about like planning issues and things that we can do to improve the, the built environment in Los Angeles as it pertains to affordability, sustainability, transportation, et cetera. So uh, let's dive in to the uh, Neighborhood Integrity Initiative and why it sucks. So here's, the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative is being really sold on a couple key points, what it does. First, many of you have heard this moratorium, the moratorium, two-year moratorium. Well, yes, it would ban all spot zoning which is a practice by the city on a case-by-case basis where they change the zoning on a, pro on a parcel of land, either through a general plan amendment or a zone change. It would ban that actually in perpetuity, not just for two years. Um, but for the two years, any project that required a spot zone change before the initiative passed can't get permits. It, they'll, they'll be barred from being able to be built, from doing any demolition or anything like that. So it bars spot zoning. Um, it actually imposes a much more stringent requirement on off-street parking and for those fellow urbanists who are interested in things like how much parking we require, particularly around transit-oriented development, the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative would say you cannot give the kinds of variances that the city has granted in the past, and I'll get to a moment why that's important. Um, environmental impact reports, it does say that developers can't just pay a, a consultant to, to conduct this environmental impact report, but they have to pay the city, and then the city goes through and does finds a vendor to do that. And I think that's a good thing. The city's actually already moving in that direction. And then finally, it requires the city to update its general plan and its community plans every five years, which on the surface actually sounds like a really good thing. But when you consider there's 35 community plans and the Hollywood community plan took about 10 years to update one community plan, took about 10 years to update, then got sued by the people who are putting the neighborhood integrity initiative on the ballot and has now gone back and has taken five more years to get updated one community plan, you can only imagine what will happen with 35 and what the city has to do to make that happen. So, a couple quick examples. Neighbor Integrity Initiative, it will make sure that our surface parking lots are preserved and it will make it much harder to do things like Walt Disney Concert Hall, which required spot zoning. It will make it much more likely that we're gonna see small lot developments that involve tearing down things like on the right lower right hand corner are like our bungalow courts that are sort of quintessential Los Angeles in East Hollywood, my neighborhood of Los Feliz, so we're like, um, where the zoning actually allows for more housing than is already currently there. And the neighborhood integrity initiative doesn't, is silent on small lot. So small lot, which a lot of people think, oh, you know, I don't like this sort of like taking over my neighborhood. The neighborhood integrity initiative does nothing about that. So for those people who are concerned about preservation of your bungalow courts where it's not, they're not actually built out to as many units as you might be able to build based on the zoning. 
Neighbor Integrity Initiative, by barring spot zoning where you can build a lot of housing in places where it's not zoned for housing, actually makes that pressure to build housing that much stronger or harder in the areas where it's already allowed, including like our bungalow court type developments all over the city. Who here has seen this? I have two minutes. Ooh, wow. Okay. Uh, so Los Angeles allows, it's zoning right now allows for 4.3 million units. We've got about 4 million uh, residents. NI allows, 7-Eleven uh, is perfect because it has plenty of parking. But Alcove Cafe and most villas in my neighborhood doesn't have near enough parking. And so those kinds of establishments where you have like patio dining where it's a large establishment and doesn't have as much parking because it's an older building or whatever, will be much more difficult to actually provide with the neighborhood integrity initiative because it doesn't allow the city the ability to give those variances. So the folks who are proponents of this initiative say, we just want you to follow the rules. But the rules allow for not a whole lot different from what's already there. They say, we don't oppose all new development, but what they're really saying is, we actually do oppose all new development. If you go to their website, to their website, there's not a single project they support. Everything that they say is they oppose it. Um, they say, this is okay time to hit the pause button. We're not in a big boom like we were back in the 80s in Los Angeles. We're actually adding about 35,000 new residents a year, which is the average we've had for the last century every single year. So we may not be in a boom, but we're actually at the same level of growth as we've been in for 100 years. They say, we're full. But what they really mean is, we just want to keep things the way they are. Um, they say, we have too much traffic, same thing. And then they also say, and this is a big one that really hits home for me, you can still build a million new homes in Los Angeles with our existing zoning. But what that means is you can tear down about 200,000 homes to build a million new homes. Because spot zoning is actually one of the best tools that we have available to us to build homes on places that are surface parking lots, like the Palladium, like this, uh, the Martin Expo Town Center right up the street on Bundy and Olympic, where they want to replace a car dealership with housing like Chinatown College Station, where they want to replace a surface parking lot with housing. All of these things would be barred under the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative. So I say it's snake oil. It's not a real thing. They're selling us that it's to stop everything you don't like, but really, they just don't, they're just trying to stop what they don't like. I'm not gonna go through all the rest of this, except just to point out that the one thing in the middle here is that the one tool that this really takes away, spot zoning, in 2015 alone enabled the approval of 8,500 new homes in Los Angeles with only demolishing 18. In LA, on average, we demolish one home for every five we build. But with spot zoning, we built 8,500 new homes in one year and demolished only 18. That tool will be gone. So when you talk about the integrity of our neighborhoods, this is probably one of the best ways we have to make that stay intact. And this, the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative would remove that tool from our toolkit. So join Greater LA on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, come to Happy Urbanists. There's an official no campaign for the Neighbor Integrity Initiative, goestofar.com. Speak up at meetings and vote March 7, 2017. Thank you.